Hi everyone, welcome back for another video about my solar configuration here and one of the questions on my mind in the summer, it's July here in the UK, is have I over configured my solar arrays? I started out with a 3.9 kilowatt array um, with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, a solace inverter, then I added another 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels on a second array with the solar edge inverter. What I've noticed over the summer is that I have a huge amount of export that's going back to the grid. Energy that I'm generating that I'm not using. So have I made a mistake? Have I over configured my system? Before I answer that question though, let's get into the numbers and see what's happened for the month of July. The 3.9 kilowatt array, the Solace inverter, that generated 505 kilowatt hours, which compares well to last year of 527 kilowatt hours. So a bit less, but you know, it's one day's generation difference really, 20 odd kilowatt hours. So not a huge difference. How it felt? It felt, compared to April, May and June, it felt quite poor actually. It felt like we didn't have a lot of sunshine. On my solar edge array, the 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, that generated 287 kilowatt hours. So pretty much we're in the high 50 to 60% um, during the summer months, variation between the two arrays. In total, that's a very, very healthy 793 kilowatt hours. What I noticed when I first installed the first solar array, anytime that I got over 500 kilowatt hours, 500 felt like enough for me to power the house, heat the hot water, charge my electric car, to do everything that I wanted. 500 kilowatt hours pretty much nailed it in the summer. So the fact that I've generated 793, well, what's happened to that energy? Okay, this month in July, I exported 292 kilowatt hours. So that leaves 501 kilowatt hours that I used. Lo and behold, that 500 number seems very relevant to my level of usage here at home. So what can I account for out of that 501 kilowatt hours? Well, on the Eddy device, that's the My Energy Eddy device, that diverts excess solar energy to my hot water through the immersion heater, a three kilowatt immersion heater in my normal standard uh, hot water tank. That used 121 kilowatt hours to keep it uh, hot. And I've got to say, Heating your hot water that way is fantastic because it's like leaving your boiler on permanently, heating your hot water. You've always got hot water in the summer and it's as hot as you set the thermostat to. So it is really, really good having that facility of heating your hot water for free from solar energy. But also you get the benefit of hot water all the time, no delays, having to wait for it to reheat up. And my Kona Electric, as you can see here, that was charged by the My Energy Zappy device, and that consumed 101.36 kilowatt hours of electricity for the month, which is, to be honest, quite a low amount. I haven't been using the car very much this month because of, I guess, the legacy of COVID-19 and the lockdown. I'm just not going as far. I'm not socializing as much. Um, I have no intention of mixing in large crowds, etc. So the mileage has been kept a lot lower. Out of that 101 kilowatt hours, 97% uh, of that was from solar energy. Only 3% of that came from the grid. And uh, the house consumed 221 kilowatt hours and the battery charged a fraction under 60 kilowatt hours. So if you add those up, that comes to 501 kilowatt hours. So it does equal exactly the difference between the total I generated and the amount I exported. So I can account for all my energy, which is quite pleasing when the numbers add up. There's no point in doing these spreadsheets and tracking all the numbers unless you can make sense of them and they actually add up. And for the whole of 2020, the Zappy device is saying that I have charged my car with 665 kilowatt hours of electricity so far this year. 88% of that came from solar energy and only 12% of that, 73 kilowatt hours, came from the grid. So at 15 pence a kilowatt hour, let's call it, that's roughly, what, 15 pounds worth of electricity. An easy way to check the miles on that is I normally average just over five miles per kilowatt hour. So five times 665 is 3,300. I've done 3,300 miles or so um, since uh, the beginning of the year. Now it'll be interesting to check. I'm gonna go out to the car in a moment and uh, take a picture of the mileage and compare that to January and see how close we are to 3,000, 3,300 miles, etc. 
and grid use. That's one I like to track because I like to get as close to zero as possible. Again, the month of July, I consumed 6.24 kilowatt hours, which is more than I would like to consume because I had a couple of issues. I did a couple of tests with a new battery that came um, and I needed to recharge the battery. And I also had a bit of a fault with the MyEnergy Zappy device where it decided to do a fast charge when it was actually set in Eco Plus mode. So again, I was noticing things. I unplugged it quickly and it only grabbed a kilowatt hour here or there but uh, my numbers should be lower than six and I keep trying to get down to you know one two three four sort of levels which is absolutely tiny but something always happens in the month and something unplanned and it uses a bit more energy than I'd hoped for and I think that's that's one of the observations that I've got with using a home storage battery it doesn't quite do what I was expecting it to do in the beginning before I had a home storage battery installed, I really thought that it would soak up the grid energy for the car being charged. For example, as a cloud comes over and I get less solar energy being generated, the Zappi has to ramp down the amount of power that it's using to charge to the car. And there's a delay, there's a delay in that. And that delay causes a little bit of grid usage as the sun goes behind a cloud and comes back out again, etc. I thought the battery would be there as a boost to catch that and catch the change and variation of the power levels ramping up or down. But to my surprise, the uh, battery isn't fast enough to respond to those sort of things. So I still get grid usage when any device changes its power level and goes on or off or up and down. So if you turn an oven on, um, you know, it's 2.3, 2.6 kilowatts. And for the first few seconds, that's coming from the grid before the battery catches it. So those sort of things have surprised me that how much grid usage that I'm actually still using. I thought the battery would catch it all. But I'm being a bit silly, really, aren't I? Because who cares whether it grabs it all? It's grabbing most of it. Without a home storage battery, I'd be consuming in the summer somewhere between 60 kilowatt hours and 80, 90 kilowatt hours, depending on what devices I used, etc. That 50, 60 to 80 kilowatt hours is now absorbed by the battery. Um, as we saw with my statistics earlier, I put 60 kilowatt hours into the battery to replace you know, almost 60 that I took out of it. So you can sort of see that it is fulfilling my needs. It's getting rid of all of the grid energy, apart from the four, five, six kilowatt hours that I'm still consuming. So the question that I asked at the beginning, have I overconfigured my system? Have I made a mistake adding that second array? Well, looking at the export numbers, we had March 153 kilowatt hours, April 506 kilowatt hours, May 560, June 372, and July 291. So those numbers do make it look like I'm exporting a huge amount of energy and therefore I have got it wrong. But there are some there are some mitigating facts here, aren't there, that I'm not driving as much um, because of the lockdown, because of COVID-19. I'm not using the car as much. And I did add a contingency there of what if we have a second electric car? I want enough power to power that as well. And then also what about when I change my oil boiler and put an air source heat pump in or a ground source heat pump or another electric solution? When I do that, I'll need more energy as well. OK, in the summer months, um, so let's say, you know, May through September, I'm not going to need it for heating. But March and April, yeah, I'm probably going to need um, some electricity for the heating. So those sort of exports that I've got at the moment, I think that they will disappear when I add more electric systems to our house. So I think so far it's looking OK. It looks terrible this year because I'm not using very much energy. Um, but planning for the future, I think I'm still on track. I've still got that question though, haven't I, that if 500 kilowatt hours is what I need to power our house, hot water and car, as it is, then a little bit more with the heating and another car, you know, we're talking 600, 700 kilowatt hours a month maybe. Well, I'm not going to have anywhere near that in the winter months. You know, I'm only talking about generating 250 to 300 kilowatt hours in the winter. So I'm only going to have half the energy I need. So it still does look like in the winter I need something else to provide more energy. And lastly, perhaps I should update you on the pure drive storage battery that we've got here. So again, it's on test. It's not one that I've purchased myself. It's not here 
permanently. Um, we've been waiting for the battery to be replaced because it had a fault with the battery where it wouldn't just charge completely. The battery has now been replaced, but I am observing some differences between this battery and the last one. The voltage looks a bit different and how it charges up to 100% looks slightly different. So I'm analyzing the data, trying to work out what the differences between the two are and trying to make sure that it's correct because it obviously needs to be correct because Christian from Power Different, who owns the battery, he obviously wants to sell it at some point. Yes, I'm testing it for him. He's testing out the battery with Pure Drive Energy to see whether they're the right sort of company and they're providing the right sort of solutions that he wants to sell to other customers. I'm doing the analysis for him and giving him some feedback on how they actually work and how they're different. So it's getting to the time now where this solution is going to be deinstalled. So I'm not going to have this Pure Drive battery anymore and we're going to be replacing it with another battery. So I'll get to try something different. Haven't quite confirmed what that's going to be yet. There is a new Pure Drive battery out that, uh, well, it looks just like a power wall, doesn't it? Um, it's an AC coupled battery solution with about the same sort of size battery. It's 4.8 kilowatt hours or 9.6 kilowatt hours. And that could be an option. Or perhaps we could be putting a Solus hybrid inverter in. So um, one that I could connect solar panels to and connect the battery to at a DC connection. So it'll be interesting to see which one we go for next and how it compares to this Pure Drive one that I've got. That sort of thing is what I'm looking for. It's helping me out massively being able to do this because I'm getting to try before I buy and see which one works really, really well. In a perfect world, I think I need a bigger battery than 4.8 kilowatt hours because in the summer with air conditioning on, it really would be nice to run that air conditioning through a large period of the night and keep the house cool. Where at the moment, uh, I can't run it for many hours, probably past 9, 10 o'clock at night without exhausting the battery by the morning and then I'm drawing from the grid. Anyway, I've rambled on far too much for this uh, video, I think. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Really, really appreciate it. Appreciate all your comments. I do enjoy hearing what sort of configurations you've got and what sort of energy numbers you've been achieving and what your thoughts are on what I'm doing and what I'm seeing here in Norfolk in the UK. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and see you again soon. Bye for now.